Coming up on today's Code Bear Daily, a huge, I believe it's huge, Friday show. That's right. We're covering a mess of stuff. We're talking player props, game picks, best bets. There's about eight rate my multis. There's the donation. I'm talking about NFL, NBA, NBL. Stats guy, what are you looking at? A uh, huge matchup in the Cricket World Cup, India and Pakistan. Always awesome. Uh, and then an AFLW rate my multi. Nice one. What about you, Alex? Uh, having a look at some Cricket World Cup, the donation, and a goal scorer in some European qualifiers. Look, I'm not going to say that the donation is a bit of a cowardly one this week, but it really is. Either way, check it out. It's all at Code Bear Daily right now. Welcome to Code Bear Daily. It is Friday. Hang on a second. Is this Friday the 13th? Oh, it that is. is too. All right. Uh, we are steering clear of all of our bets today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe we should. Jeez. Changing the donation right now because I like one of them. <laughs> I wonder if we just go opposite everything we say here and uh, we might have a bit of a winner. Uh, this is episode 214 of Code Bet Daily. I am your host, James Clements. I'm the editor of a very good website. It's called Code Bet. You can find that at codebet.com.au. Along with all the betting analysis and cod- odds comparison. The CODs comparison? Yeah, oh, yeah. Nice. Fishing show. Oh, fishing show. Yeah, yeah. We get ET involved. Uh, either way, I'm joined as always by the Pontiffs, uh, also Fishers. There we go. What do we got? Uh, stats guy down there. Don't Absolutely. Uh, yeah, still a bit sad after the Aussies got smashed last night, but we did pick that. So at least, yeah, 50 50 on that one. Yeah, I was on South Africa anyway. So it was one of those ones where you're like watching and going, oh, I'm sad, but I'm yeah. not bad. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got Alex Donnelly. Yeah, I quit my job on a Friday the 13th, and then two weeks later, the world shut down. So this doesn't feel good. Oh, so are you quitting again? Hey, I was no. going to say, <laughs> what happens? I had a know. previous job. Righto. Uh, this is Code Bet Daily, aka Code Tins Daily, because I am I would not want to be a froth in about six hours, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> or minutes. Uh, <laughs> minutes. Please, please. Let's go. Settle down. Uh, that guy hasn't a- stopped. That's the thing. Since Wednesday <laughs> night. Yeah, yeah. That's too hard. <laughs> Uh, it is what it says on the tin. It's codes, it's betting, it's daily. We've got player props, game picks, burst bets. Uh, rate my multi, and of course, it's Friday. So we have a donation, everyone's favorite aspect of Code Bet Daily on a Friday. Uh, what are we looking at today? Big NFL weekend ahead. There are some weird matchups. I uh, mentioned the other day about you know sticking to one of my NFL Australia rules when it comes to the AFC South. I'm going to go ahead and once again break that because apparently just that rule stinks. But <laughs> whatever. Uh, I also then have an alternate where I do stick to that rule uh, in one of my rate my multis for NFL. We're talking a little bit of NBA. I can throw one more. I don't know if I've mentioned this over under yet. but uh, And I've also got some lines there for the NBL on Saturday too that I'm going to talk about. Stats guy, what about you? Uh, a bit of Cricket World Cup again. Uh, and then an AFLW rate my multi. Big uh, weekend coming up. Nice one, Alex. Uh, Cricket World Cup, some soccer, and of course, the donation. Be good. Let's do it. Let's do some player props. Player props, 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 props. Amon Rasson Brown is back. Uh, They're playing Tampa Bay this week. The Detroit Lions, I actually really like the Lions in this game. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, But Amon Rasson Brown, just go anytime touchdown. Feel great about this. Uh, They also have Jameson Williams coming back, which is a little bit of a uh, sort of slight worry. Uh, the, I don't know, when you get pinged for, I don't know, whether it be performance enhancing drugs, for gambling, whatever, then you sort of get like this weird sort of five, six week off period now. And you're like, to be honest, that's not that bad. I might just come that's back. That's it, really. Just wow. jump in a month and a half into the season. <laughs> away we go. Uh, but look, I'm still going to lean on Amon Ra, the sun god, uh, because this Tampa Bay oh, defense, look, it's been handy at times. I think they've not played anyone quite as good as Detroit yet and they might just get slapped around just a hint. So I'm going to go Amon, Ross, and Brown. And if you want to jump on that four, I was waiting for the markets to pop up. They're actually not there, uh, which is frustrating. But the Amon, Ross, and Brown, anytime touchdown, you can probably go the 60 yards receiving as well. Package those up and away we go. The same thing goes for Philly versus the New York City Jetropolitans. That's right, the New York City Jets. Jalen Hurts. He's top 35-plus rushing yards in, I think, four of his five games so far. He scored four touchdowns on the ground as well, I think it was. Is it three or four? It's four. Uh, he's gone 34. Yeah, I think – there we go. It's 34-plus. So he just ticked under the 35 in one of them. So if you feel good about the 30-plus rushing yards for Jalen Hurts, the Jets' defense is obviously pretty good. But I think what we saw from Hurts last week was a player who's like, oh, hang on a second. I've hit my groove. I'd be jumping on for MVP as well at this point. So – but against the Jets, I think the Eagles smash them. So if you want to go Jalen Hurts, 35-plus rushing yards, happy days. Uh, whatever that mark is that the markets actually sort of give you, 
They'll either go 25 or 30, 35. You can probably find around that one. Anytime touchdown. You could also go two touchdowns, I think, for Jalen Hurts. Doesn't mind getting in for the old double score. Uh, he did so against Minnesota back in week two, I want to say that was. Yeah, that checks out. Uh, so, unfortunately, we just don't have any markets open up yet because that's on Monday morning, it's oh. Friday. But either way, once they do open up, I'll be all over that. And one last little player prop very quickly ahead of the season of the NBA opening up in about ooh, 10 days' time. Rudiger Bass, Stafford Tower, rebounds leader. What? He did it two years ago. Ooh. Then joined the Minnesota Timberwolves in a huge trade. Got, you know, teamed up with a big cat, Carl Anthony Towns. I think Rudy Gobert has a bit of a bounce back here. He still averaged 11.6 rebounds last season. He's got to get past, you know, the leaders in the clubhouse. But I think this Minnesota team, the more I've sort of dug into this season, they just look a little bit better. Just a little bit better. Like, I think last year we saw, was it AD, I think, ended up on top. So Rudy Gobert was in the top five still with 11.6. He had the Suvlaki King, Demata Sabonis at 12.3. Nikola Jokic, hello, 11.8. And Giannis at 11.8. I think Rudy can jump back up one more rebound per game. He'd be right there. The fact that he's $6 is pretty chaotic. Yeah. Sabonis is like the only dude who rebounds on that uh, Sacramento team. But I think you might see a little bit more Keegan Murray. I just like Rudy Gobert. Like he's the best price at the moment. So 6 bucks. I'm all over that. Uh, we'll have way more NBA Strayer uh, stuff next week for the over-unders as well and some player awards gear. So that'll be fun. There you go. There's a nice little teaser. Alex, player props. Yep. Having a look at that uh, France versus Netherlands game tomorrow morning that we talked about yesterday in the match or game picks. And I'm having a look at Killian and Barpay to score any time. He's 2 bucks 50 to do so. Uh, he scored four goals in five of the qualifying games that he's played in so far. And then you have a look at his form in PSG since the season has started. He's got eight goals in nine games. So... In absolute rare form for someone even of his abilities to be scoring, you know, what, 12 goals in 14 games. Uh, As we said yesterday, the Netherlands are missing a lot of their key defensive unit and they could find themselves in a world of hurt. As said, a win here guarantees France a spot in the Euros if it wasn't already guaranteed because they're France. And quick (laughs) shout out to Aidan Markram for slapping 50 uh, last night against Australia, $2.63. Thank you. Yeah. So what was the price for Mbappe? Two bucks fifty. Two fifty is really good. Yeah, Jeez, that's awesome. It's because it's against the Netherlands, I guess, and and they haven't really looked into yeah. the squad and how much depth the Dutch are missing. It's like Virgil Van Dijk, as Stats Guy said this week. This is a Stats Guy comment, not me. Is a shadow of his former self. He so is. Mbappe yeah. just go. Ha, that's cute. I'm going to go straight past you. Yeah. Uh, I, if, yeah. If he's their only real uh, starting defender, there they've got a few hmm. worries. Well, yeah. no Botman, no Delit, no Timber. Yeah. Like it's not great. Hmm. Good one. All right, Stats Guy, what's your player prop? Uh, yeah, a bit of Cricket World Cup. Uh, one of the biggest rivalries in sport is tomorrow night, Saturday night. Uh, India taking on Pakistan, which is absolutely massive. Uh, two, uh, two versus, sorry, three versus four in the ICC World Rankings. So I was about to say two versus three there. Uh, have a look at Jasper, Brum- Jasper Bumrah. I was all over Use him. Your words, <laughs> Use your words, Stats Guy. Use your words. You have been on the tins for the last two days. Oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll get there eventually. Uh, Jasper Bumrah, he was awesome. Uh, got four wickets last game. I'm going to go for him again at three plus wickets for $3.50. 50. He's got nine wickets across the last three games, averaging over two wickets uh, across the last few years in ODI cricket. Just think he's the perfect ODI bowler. He's got the Yorker. He's got the ball swing in both ways at the moment. And the conditions aren't uh, suited to spinners as much as usual. They're actually decent decks for uh, pace bowlers in India this, this time around. So don't mind him for three plus wickets. Uh, then having a look at one of the most informed batsmen in the world for Pakistan, Mohamed Rizwan. I was all over him last game, got 131 uh, yeah, last match. I don't mind him for 30 plus even is $1. eighty-three, And then the 50 plus is $2.75. In his last eight matches in ODIs, he's got five 50s and two hundreds in his last eight. So seven of those, he's getting a 50 or a hundred. I think he's been in absolutely awesome form. I know he's playing India now, but he has scored multiple 50s against India in the past. And he's just been absolutely awesome. I think coming in at four, he sort of gets rid of the new ball of uh, Boomerang and then he can smack him around. He's also averaging 75 runs in 2023 in ODI cricket. So he's been absolutely awesome. And I really like the 50 plus runs for Rizwan again. Do you reckon I can get him on my pub cricket team? What do you reckon? <laughs> oh, I reckon if when next time they tour in Australia, we can yeah definitely get him down. <laughs> Just wait till he uh, tweets about one of his teammates misses again and then you should be sweet. Was that, wasn't that yeah. uh, uh, fake in the end or... I can't remember what happened there. No, that was Barbara Azam, I think. Ah, oh, well. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can anyway. take either of them. They're really good. <laughs> yeah. Alex, Alex confused on the internet. Who the only thought? thing, Jimmy, is a keeper. Is he taking your spot in the uh, in the keeper position? Or he can't. Surely he can't. To be honest, to be honest uh, considering the state of my body, he can take my spot as keeper. Like 
tomorrow. Like, Jim's just going to have the expert sitting at square leg in the deck chair just drinking tins. I won't, I won't be, I'll be off the field. I'll be just sitting <laughs> still, still, still sitting board. down drinking tins. <laughs> I'll just be hanging out. Uh, good times, great memories. We still yeah. need to go and watch Stats Guy and have tins on the hill next year. Lock it in, yeah. All right, let's do some match and or game picks. What's your best match or game pick? Well, uh, Ravens and the Titans, Alex's beloved Tennessee Titans, they play. Go in, on. They're in London this week. Uh, let's go the Lunder, shall we? That's right, the Lunder. The because <laughs> that's the London under. Under 41 and a half. You might go, geez, Jim, that's still a bit low. And it's like, yeah. And both these teams stink when it comes to scoring. Yeah, because they really, really, really do. Um, In terms of the actual like scoring for these two teams, right? If you just want to go points per game, which is a very, very simple metric. I reckon we've scored five touchdowns all season. Tennessee (laughs) averaging seventeen point six points a game. That is wow. uh, I want to say even I know that's horrible. Yeah. Seventh or eighth worst, and Baltimore at twenty one point eight, and that came after a big one last week. So. Even just those simple averages can fly <laughs> under 40 points. Um, but look, I just don't see the Titans putting up a big enough score on Baltimore, whose defense always dealing with injuries, but then Baltimore do the same sort of thing on offense. Like the Tennessee defense has been handy at times. I think this is just going to be a dour arm wrestle in an absolute classic of a London game where you're like, wow, well, we sent Baltimore and Tennessee to London, and what we got was a 17 14 <laughs> slog. Gross. Is this a Tottenham point, Stadium again? I think so. It's a Tottenham again. Uh, I'm probably the, when the numbers for this came out as well. The line was about. I think it's it was around three. It's sort of moved towards Tennessee to be four now, as I think folks have jumped on Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore dealt with a lot of drops last week. I think Baltimore win this, but Tennessee just plays stupid games. Uh, give me plus four for Tennessee. I think they can at least keep with this in with, within a field goal. Uh, it just. It feels like an absolute classic UK NFL game where you just go there and you're like, I want to just burn my eyes out. This is horrible. <laughs> and like Baltimore win with a field goal at the end or something, but Tennessee still cover that four. Uh, but we have a couple of other games and match picks over the weekend. So NFL Sunday night, it's a weird setup this week with that sort of game. You got a, you've only got two, uh, two bye weeks. I think it's Green Bay and Pittsburgh. But... We have some weird, where weird games where they've travelled back from the UK. So Jacksonville come back, they don't take a bye. Buffalo come back, they don't take a bye as well. I think that's a bit of a mistake. Yeah, that's a bit uh, harsh. It's very strange. So that means I'm going to break that NFL Australia rule of don't bet on the AFC South. Uh, I just did, obviously, talking about Tennessee plus four. I'm going to do it again. Indy plus four <laughs> over Jacksonville. Jacksonville come back. They've just won their two games in London. This is an interdivisional game. Two times AFC South, steer clear. But if you're going to go something, Indy plus four, that's great. Indy are just flying at the moment. They've got Jonathan Taylor back at Zach Moscow. Absolutely ham last week. Indy plus four over Jacksonville. Miami are absolutely going to demolish a rate, Carolina, because Carolina are the worst team in the NFL. And Miami have set the record for the most yards and points through five games. So that seems like a big thing. Minus 13 and a half there. Thank you very much. Houston. Over New Orleans, you might go, well, this is a bit strange. Didn't Houston lose last week, Jim? I'm like, yes, they did. On a uh, game-winning field goal from Young Way Koo by Atlanta, New Orleans slapped my beloved New England Patriots around the park in Foxborough. It was brutal. It sucked. They shut them out. It was horrible. <laughs> Absolutely horrible. Talk about an absolute letdown spot for New Orleans, though. Turn around, go lose to Houston. Thank you very much. Houston plus one and a half. Detroit minus three over Tampa Bay. I already mentioned that. Detroit's defense has been handy. Tampa Bay come in off a bye, but I think Detroit is still just too good across the park. And, of course, the Philly over Jets one that I talked about on yeah. yesterday. Philly minus seven. It hasn't moved yet. I'm sticking with that. That's five legs at 24-35. Gentlemen, Ooh. please, rate. Rate my multi. Nice. Uh, I'll give it a nine. I really like that. I like some of the uh, underdogs you get there. Philly minus seven, like you mentioned. I'll be all over that. So, yeah, I'll give it a nine. Very nice. They're going to bury Zach Wilson. Like, mm. It's going to be brutal. Like, <laughs> like, turn it off. He's already dead. Yeah. Um, Alex, how do you feel? Seven. Seven. Uh, 13, uh, just 13 and a half just feels like a lot. I know Miami are awesome, but God, it's a lot. Miami put up 70 on Denver. <laughs> yeah. 
they won by 50. Like, they, the it's over still a lot. <laughs> it is, but it's only two touchdowns. Like, Tyreek Hill yeah. could do that in his sleep. Yeah. Um, if you want to cut out the AFC South teams, as I've mentioned, right, just the ones that you're like, all right, I don't want to bet on the AFC South. Simple as that. This is the NFL Australia rule. You still end up with Miami, Detroit, and Philly, and that's still $6.70. So Ooh. I actually don't mind that. It's just a three-leg up, just saying. Uh, Saturday, well, Friday NBL. To recap what Stats Guy and I were talking about yesterday, we've got Brisbane, Sydney. We've got the big Aaron Baines news. He's been suspended for five games. Massive. Hashtag free bangers. What are you going to do? That's oh, harsh. That's harsh. Sometimes you just it's, want to fight opposition it's, cut. It's 12 <laughs> less than what you thought it was going to be, though. You said 17 to begin with. I was joking. <laughs> Nah, five thing. five seems like too much. I, I think Hashtag free bangers. Let the man play. Uh, all he did was try to fight Adam Ford. We've all had that <laughs> thought in our lives. Let's go. Yeah. Um, but Brisbane, I think that line will probably surely subside, uh, a little bit now. Um, yeah. And it is now down to four and a half for the Kings. I'd still be back in the Kings at this point. Yeah. We had them at minus one and a half. I think we're still on them at minus three and a half. And I think we're still going minus four and a half stats guy. Yeah, Baines um, is a huge out. I think that, that he was the, he's their defense and rebounding and even some of their offense when they, he plays a bit of bully ball. So Sydney King's going to be all over. Yeah, the over under's actually moved up to 177.5 as well. I'd probably still stick with the over because without bangers there, I think it becomes a little bit more free-flowing, a little bit more shooty-shooty. Uh, and Perth, Melbourne out there in the West tonight. Perth, two and a half point favorites still. I'm still going to go back United. The over-under is still sitting at 175.5. I think I'm still going to go the over there as well. Saturday's slate, though, stats guy. I don't know how you feel about these. Sixers, Hawks. Gross. Hawks got absolutely... Yeah, that's dem- a bad game. <laughs> by Tassie last I mean, it's night. two pathetic towns, so let's be honest. Oh. <laughs> that annoyed. I was like, also, Illawarra is not a town, but whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a locality. A spot. I just still think of it as the Wollongong Hawks, to be honest. Yeah. Dumping on the region. Nothing like it. Uh, <laughs> but this is the Sixers minus one and a half. I think this is their best chance to get a win on the board. So I'd probably go the Sixers minus one and a half. I'd probably steer clear of the over under at 176.5, though. That's just. 176. Oh. Yeah, because it could be two crap teams that can't play defense, but then it could be two crap teams that can't shoot. So <laughs> it could go either way. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix Jackies is the other one tomorrow night on Saturday at 7 p.m. Phoenix are at home. They're one and a half point underdogs. I'd actually jump the Phoenix at home plus mm. one and a half. Yeah. The Jackies are playing really well, but on two days, Phoenix can probably scheme up something a little bit here. I'd still go the over as well. That's only 174. The Phoenix don't play much defense. No. So there we go. All right, Alex, match and door game picks. Yeah, having a look at the Cricket World Cup games over the weekend, just rip through them, which will include uh, Monday night's game because there's four, make it nice and even. Uh, New Zealand will smoke Bangladesh uh, later tonight. I believe that is pronounced Jim's beloved New Zealand. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, you are better than Ben Stokes as a gingered Kiwi. I agree. Absolutely. Uh, you, you don't punch blokes at a pub, so that's all right. Well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, I suppose that you may have done some stuff in Ballarat back in the day. <laughs> I did actually. I uh, brought up this morning to the squids at the uh, the Brecky table because old mate's away. She's out tonight. She's uh, on a big work thing. Uh, so I'm like, all right, what do you reckon tonight? Pub feed? And Jack, <laughs> the little, uh, the biggest little one, he's just like, oh, yeah. I'm like, sweet, we go to the pub. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully nice. it's better than last time I saw him at the pub where he's just like, I just want to go home, man. This <laughs> guy's been dudes down at the pub. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Try not to get in any punch ons. So, fair enough. Anyway, hey, well, I'd back Jack to belt stats guy though. <laughs> Whoa, that much difference in height. Jeez. Yeah, no, I tell you what, head, that's just you not go happening. the head button, I just wham. <laughs> anyway, not much in height. <laughs> you are small. Uh, anyway, New Zealand will smack Bangladesh around. Uh, Jim's beloved New Zealand are going really good. They're looking very dangerous. Again, a tournament that involves nine Bangladesh games ain't great. Uh, India will beat Pakistan just because they're simply better. The atmosphere could absolutely get to this Pakistan team. It is going to be an electric atmosphere. Yeah. So if you're doing nothing Saturday night, actually tune in this half an hour or so, so it's going to be absolutely sweet. Uh, I'll be yeah, England will just... Uh, just embarrass Afghanistan. I'm sorry, England are just much better. And on Monday, after our pitiful performance last night, I'm going to tip Sri Lanka at four dollars to beat Australia, just oh, because those odds are bucks. way too good. Why didn't we learn last night? We should not be favourites or very heavy favourites at anything. We are a dollar twenty nine. It is That's disgusting. Sri Lanka have beaten Pakistan and India this year. I'm pretty sure in a couple of yeah. matches. Like they're not that bad. <laughs> yeah, we wow. stink. Gerald, please hit the button. Rate my multi. You can get eight bucks for all those head-to-head ones. Ooh. I, I like that a lot. 
The Sri Lanka one obviously is a little That's bit. The 50, 50, 50. Yeah, but no, you get to that. You get to that. You're, you're on the final <laughs> leg. You have something small in Australia, just to you know, yeah, bounce it out, hedge that one out, and away you go. Um, mm. I actually really like that because I tend to agree with the India Pakistan call. Obviously, New Zealand and England too. So, I mean, I'm on board. Uh, Sri Lanka could easily beat Australia from what we've seen, right? Like, yeah, yeah. He is not firing. I do worry about like the Sri Lanka bowlers. Obviously, obviously, we've seen what South Africa took them absolutely apart the other day. But the way that Australia's batting, like, mm. well, they'll score two fifty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like we went off. We scored two hundred and sixty-two. So, oh, that's probably not going to be enough. I'll tell you that much. No. I like that. I'll give that a nine. All on board. Yeah, I'll give it a nine as well. Sri Lanka, just looking at it, they've scored over three hundred and twenty in both their matches. We can't even get two hundred. So yeah. Yeah, it is underrated how heavy and all in the Australians were on winning the World <laughs> Test Series and the Ashes. Like, so this is sort of an afterthought, to be honest. Like, we did what we needed to do, and oh, crap, we got to. I'm just worried about the, the young guys coming through, which is yeah. Anyway, we'll what young that guys? That's yeah, that's my point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Our bowlers look old and cooked. It's, yeah, uh, uh, not great. And that is it. The fact that Maxi was like our best bowler last night. Was yeah, that's a worry. <laughs> horrible. Yeah. All right. Stats guy. Yeah, looking at that huge Cricket World Cup match that Alex was talking about, I think it's going to be a sellout, 132,000 in India. So India taking on Pakistan. Uh, I think this will be a really close matchup, even though I am leaning slightly towards India. Uh, they're third and fourth ranked teams in the world. It will be yeah, hard for World Pakistan. ranking means absolutely nothing when it's these two well, going Well, I, I originally, yeah, when they're going head to head, but I originally thought the world rankings weren't that good, but New Zealand and South Africa, who are one and two, have actually been yeah really good. So they... The rankings aren't too bad. Uh, yeah, Pakistan, I think they can keep this close, though. They're pretty strong against spin, and you got the conditions in India uh, that are pretty similar, and they've got a lot of batters that can play both spin and pace and have been strong against India in the past. Uh, India, though, they've won eight of the last 10 ODI meetings. So it went in these big matches, in these big rivalries, uh, especially at home, you've got to back India. I think they're only $1.44, but I don't mind Pakistan at the line. Four of the last five meetings, they've covered this line. So you can get Pakistan mm. plus five and a half wickets, or plus 33 and a half runs at $1.90. Uh, yeah, as I said, four of the last five meetings in all formats have been less than this. I just think they match up really well. They've both got really good white ball uh, batters and bowlers, so mainly the pace uh, guys for Pakistan will have to do a bit of the work. But yeah, they match up really well. India should get the job done, especially at home in that massive stadium that's going to be absolutely rocking. But yeah, $1.90, bit better value for uh, Pakistan just to cover the line there. That is fascinating that four of the last five have hit under those lines. Yes. That's yeah. Yeah. Some of them were 2020, so that's a bit of an outlier. But just in general, I think a lot of this uh, this rivalry is close. So plus five and a half wickets. Suspect The 33 and a half runs is, I don't know if that's an even sort of thing to the plus five and a half, but still don't mind it. I like that. Hmm. I still think I'll just uh, jump on India with a head to head and maybe another couple of other little bits yeah. and bobs here. Fair enough. That's still pretty good. That's good digging stats, guy. Not bad. Nice. All right, let's do some best bets. It's best bets. It's best bets. It's time for all the best bets. I've got to get a hat and a cane and just <laughs> everything in that place. Uh, best bets. I'm, look, I'm just going to get bang on about this. Philly over the Jets minus seven. What are we doing here? Come on. I'm all over that. Uh, NBA MVP. Ooh. Hashtag spoiler alert. Jason Tatum, $8. I love that. Absolutely Love it, Stats. I think Luca and the Mavs are going to stink. Uh, that's one of my leans this season. I think Giannis will probably give this a really good shake because he's got Dame, but he's like priced at around four or five. I think his scoring will drop anyway with Dame. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they both averaged over 30 last year, so it's yeah. probably going to have to come off a little. Uh, but Tatum, I think this will be the classic case of the best player on. Well, Jok- Joker is probably a pretty good look as well, but again, he's the favorite. So, yeah. This could be the. What would it be? It'd be like the, the uh, we gave it to MB, MB last year. We made a mistake. <laughs> this is this is the correction where we probably should have given Joker three in a row. We're sorry. Probably Joker wins it this year. He's the favorite. But if you're going to go somebody who's not exactly the favorite and you just don't want to go chalk, Tatum. They could easily be the best team in the East. Tatum would be the best player on the best team in the East that wins like they win 58 games. I mean, it's hard to sort of go. Now nah, we shouldn't give Jason Tatum that one. <laughs> and it's like he's the exact profile for an MVP, right? He's like. Fifth the six year now at this point. Yep. Uh, amazing. Amazingly, he's still only 19 years old, but yeah. still. <laughs> um, incredible gear from Tatum. Eight bucks. I love that price when I saw it. And the last little one, win totals. Again, a spoiler. I don't know if I mentioned this one on Wednesday show, but the Washington under 24 and a half. Here is their starting lineup. <laughs> Tars Jones, Tars Jones, Jordan Poole, Denny Avdija, 
Kyle Kuzma, <laughs> Dan Gafford. That team stinks. I don't know a few of those guys, and most of them are not starting in most teams. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, they've got nothing to play for. I'm like, well, they've got nothing to tank for. It's like, no, I'm pretty sure they do. Like, this <laughs> is loss horrible. Like, Jordan Poole is just like Zion and Myers' diet, right? Empty stats, 100%. Yeah. Empty calories. And I think Poole, Kuzma, like, there's just not enough defense on this team. They're going to get just killed. If, there's no chance that they win 25 plus games. There is a weird one where, like, statistically, I think when you have teams that are under uh, 25 wins going into a season, the over actually tends to hit like around 55%. Okay. Might even go up to 58. But that's a lot of the time it's sort of uh, misjudging uh, younger teams or tanking teams or whatever, and they sort of just outperform expectations. The East is good, the West is good. There's only like three maybe bad teams this entire season. Yeah, NBA. it's going to be even, yeah. Easy wins. Washington are cooked. There's no way they win 25. So I'm Washington under 24 and a half, one of my absolute locks. Uh, Stats guy, what is your best bet? Yeah, doing a bit of an AFLW rate my multi. Uh, the first one I'm going to do is St. Kilda. I, I mentioned them yesterday, minus 14 and a half against GWS. Does look like a big line, but they've won three in a row. Uh all three have been uh, allowing only less than 40 points. So the strong defense against the struggling GWS team, I don't mind that. I've sort of flipped here. I do think Hawthorne can cover the line. We're going to go Sydney head-to-head against Hawthorne. Swans just won a couple more games than Hawks this year. Hawks have only won, won the one game. As Alex has mentioned, the, the Swans have now got a few players starting to hit or hit at least closer to their prime, all these young players that are starting to go really well. So I'm going to go them head-to-head there. Uh, Gold Coast plus 13 and a half versus Brisbane. This is probably the toughest leg, but I think they can cover it. Brisbane absolutely choked to 11th place calling with last week. They were smashing them by about 20 or 30 points and then lost that game. Suns, they've won four of their last five. And I think almost all their matches except one, they've covered the line. So that plus 13 and a half, I don't mind. Gold Coast have, yeah, gone really well this year. It's very surprising. Uh, then last leg, North Melbourne versus Port Adelaide. I think the plus 44 and a half for Port Adelaide is an absolute steal. North only won this matchup by 25 points last year. And Port, they've improved. They didn't win a game last year. They've won it, won a game this year, Port. And they've got a lot of young uh, players that have just been a lot better this year. So I'm surprised that that's such a big line. I know North are going really well, but that's a yeah, huge line. So I'm going to go uh, Port of the line. They also covered that line uh, against the Saints and Geelong. So $9.28 altogether for St. Kilda minus 14.5, Sydney head-to-head, Gold Coast plus 13.5, and Port plus 44.5 against North. And what's it coming at? Rate my multi. Thank you, Gerald. Uh, that four-leg multi is 928. Not bad. Mm. Uh, I do like the Port Adelaide call mm. because if they're covering lines like that. That's all right. North yeah. are really good. Whew, I really like this. Alex, what do you think? Three. I watched Port Adelaide last week. Their four entries were absolutely horrendous and a better team like North Melbourne will smash them. Yeah, I, th- I still think it could be 40 or even 35, but the yeah, the 40, 45 is pushing, I reckon, but we'll see. Yeah, seven goal head start. I'll yeah, take. but their their lack of points against a good team like North Melbourne is mm. not great. Like in the yeah. last quarter, they were just bombing it forward, and the Swans' defense, which is okay, but it's like huh, another intercept mark. This is cool. It, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't great, like tactically, and a, and a good team like North Melbourne will cut them through the midfield and kick a bunch of goals. Fair enough. Interesting. Yeah, North are uh, what better than St Kilda and Geelong. So yeah, a bit tr- yeah. I'd probably go five or a six. I also worry, like, I actually don't mind the Gold Coast call covering against Brisbane. That's yeah. fun. I, in the uh, past, I would never. I just want Brisbane to get one. beaten. Yeah. I think, <laughs> I think Brisbane will win. I'm because death riding this one so hard. They're a better team, but they haven't been. They've been actually, really bad. What's my so. cash out on that one? <laughs> Do we call that a Q, Q clash up there or not? I forgot. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Nice. All That's right. Good. Time for everybody's favorite segment on a Friday. Ooh. Donation. This one might actually win. Donation. Yeah, take it away, Alex. Yeah, struggled this week because there really isn't a lot on that I'm an expert on. So uh, we'll start off with some cricket. Yes, expert. <laughs> expert. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Evil. Uh, New Zealand head to head against Bangladesh in the cricket. Same with India and Pakistan. Moving across to some football, Japan head-to-head against Jim's beloved Canadia with uh, Jonathan David. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Knew that had come along. Uh, England taking on Australia in a friendly this weekend yeah. at Wembley. Uh, England and over three and a half goals against Australia. So that's just for the game in total. Sorry, two and a half goals, not three and a half goals. Uh, I think obviously the Poms should take care of us even with some 
injury issues to a few players. They're just much better than us. Uh, the Swans head to head against Hawthorne in the AFLW, a stats guy I mentioned. And then across to some horses, Ramwick Race 3, number four, Arctic Glamour. Absolutely blitzed them first up in fast time. This isn't a much better race despite the grading of the race. She should be getting the job done and going on to bigger and better things. And then Caulfield race 10, number three, Amelia's Jewel. She's the best horse running at Caulfield tomorrow. She will absolutely pulverize them. She's set to peak third up from a spell and she'll win well. That donation, I'm a bit annoyed at myself. It's only $36.09 this week. <laughs> what? That's still pretty good. but <laughs> That's missing a digit. Yeah, I, <laughs> I could have thrown in another horse somewhere if I really wanted to. Look, if you want to throw in a uh, Ramwick Race 4 Snowman, it'll take it up to about 150 to 1. There we go. That's more the donation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't Larry enough. Can I give that? I'll I'm give it a... <laughs> Yeah, I'll give it a 10 for a, a really good multi. But for in terms of a donation, I'll give it a 2. <laughs> it doesn't feel donate enough. You should just like throw in my entire like NFL multi in there as well. Yeah. Just Probably combine, should have thrown in like France to beat Netherlands tomorrow or something. Yeah, combine my AFLW enough. one <laughs> with yeah. that. Uh, I don't mind that. The New Zealand, India, Japan over Canada, England over Australia, Swans over Hawks. Yeah, I'll pay that. I'll give it a good seven. Mm. Yeah. Just if you want my, um, I've got a horse racing multi that I'm taking tomorrow too. So it's a similar sort of price. Uh, those two horses that I mentioned, uh, as well as militarized to win uh, the Caulfield Guineas. And I need to find the other one. What is it? It is uh, as for to win a race number five at Caulfield as well. Those four thrown together is about $35. Oh, cool. So if you throw that on top of the, exam. on top of the other one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And it's then throw in Snowman, you'll get about 4,000 to one. Nice. I did That's take a 8,001 multi with my group one tips for the weekend, though. So, so if we don't see Alex on Monday, we know why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like, I think I went like 45 grand for like five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He's moved to Bali and living there for a year. <laughs> All right. Vietnam. I'd go to Vietnam over Bali. <laughs> Put him to goey. Uh, right, that's it. Code Bed Daily done for today, done for the week. We'll be back on deck next Monday obviously, because that's the start of a new week. Uh, so get right around this show and all of the shows. The EPL show will be back next week. NBA Australia will be back next week as well. NFL Australia keeps on cranking out week six ahead. Uh, if you want to hear a breakdown of every single one of those games for this week, go, go subscribe to NFL Australia. Uh, obviously, hold all tickets. A massive, <laughs> massive show this week through punters.com.au and Betfair. Head to Great YouTube job, as well. Alex and Lammy absolutely smashed it this week too. So like, review, and star. All of those subscribe across all your podcast apps. Uh, and, of course, Chuck, code bit a bit of a follow across all the socials, would you? Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, X, and Threads. Uh, send in any questions. We had a great Rate My Multi sent in by Chris yesterday. Enjoyed yes. that. Uh, looking forward to seeing how that one goes by the end of the NBA season. Uh, but I think that's it. Good week. You know, just a weird week without EPL as well, but, you know, plenty going on. Uh, thanks, Stats Guy. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, cheers. Thanks, as always, to Gerald for producing. He does a great job, doesn't he? Uh, and thanks to me, just because, I don't know, powering through like a weird sore throat. But, you know, cry me a river, he says. Uh, what do we say, Stats Guy? Gamble responsibly. All right, Mayo picks come in. Happy punting. Have a great weekend. We will catch you on Monday. Code Bet Daily, out. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.